Today I'm going to give you the college football playoff national title odds as well as bowl projections for the New Year's Six and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. So the Las Vegas Superbook released its latest college football playoff national championship game odds. And surprise, surprise, it has Alabama at the top of the list at 7-4, followed by Clemson at 4-1, Georgia and Ohio State respectively at 6-1, Michigan at 10-1, Wisconsin at 15-1, and the Sooners at 20-1. Oklahoma is also a 4-5 favorite to win the Big 12 title. Notable Big 12 programs with national title odds include Texas at 30 to 1 and West Virginia at 60 to 1. But notably, since the college football playoff, Oklahoma leads the country in road wins at 18, has scored more points than anybody else at 2,242, has scored 17 50 point games, eat your heart out, James Harden, and averaged 7.3 yards per play. All those stats lead you to believe Oklahoma is going to be in the hunt for a national title no matter who the quarterback is. And whether it's Austin Kendall or Kyler Murray, CBS Sports New Year's Six projections don't care. And we're going to talk about those in a bit. But I think, yes, Alabama has to be the prohibitive betting favorite at 7-4, mostly because the selection committee has demonstrated they don't care if Alabama wins a conference championship. They don't care if Alabama wins its division. They'll still put them in the college football playoff. I think Clemson is also a solid bet. However, Kelly Bryant just doesn't do it for me. And we saw Clemson get destroyed by Alabama in the playoff. Yes, the defense will be good because Brent Venables is good. But until I know what they have at quarterback, I got a hard time betting on them to win the college football national championship, though they've done it more recently than, say, Oklahoma. I also really got a problem with Michigan at 10 to 1. Yeah, Shea Patterson is a good quarterback, but is he a national championship quarterback? I don't really think so. Plus, I don't trust Jim Harbaugh to put on his khakis with the zipper facing the front after the way he's handled this whole quarterback competition fiasco by not just telling everybody what everybody knows, which is Shea Patterson is your guy, but also because Michigan can't beat Ohio State. And until they can beat Ohio State, I don't see them playing in the college football playoff, let alone for a national championship. And since you didn't ask, I also got a problem with Ohio State getting 6-1 to one odds because their head coach isn't even here in August. They're depending on an unproven guy to lead the team because you can't look at Greg Schiano and do it. They're breaking in a new quarterback because JT Barrett is gone and outside of J.K. Dobbins at running back, you don't know what the offense even has. And so I guess what I'm really saying is I can deal with Wisconsin at 15-1 to one because all they do is run the ball and play defense and that works in the Big Ten. And I can also see Georgia at 6-1 to one because yes, losing Sonny Michelle and Nick Chubb is going to hurt, but DeAndre Swift and Evander Holyfield's kid can absolutely play some running back, and Justin Fields, who I think ought to be the starting quarterback of Georgia this year, is pretty good. Now, getting into the CBS Bro projections, some of these odds make a little bit more sense, but let's start with the Peach Bowl, where CBS Sports has Miami playing against Penn State, with the reasoning being a berth in the Peach Bowl for Penn State means the Nittany Lions would likely be vying for their third consecutive 11-win season under James Franklin, something that's never been done in program history. It would be quite a feat in 2018 considering Penn State is somewhat of a new-look offense without Saquon Barkley and play caller Joe Moorhead. But the key is Trace McSorley's return, a multi-year starter who will exit the program with several school records for passing numbers. Miami lost a home game in the New Year's Six last season, so perhaps a trip to Atlanta would be welcomed for the Hurricanes. And I think that that's kind of correct. I think Miami is still the closest to knocking off Clemson when it comes to an ACC title, but it's still Clemson's conference and the way that the Big 12 is Oklahoma's conference. And I expect Trace McSorley to be a dark horse for the Heisman Trophy this year if he has a decent season. Next, CBS Force has Stanford versus Boise State in the Fiesta Bowl which would be good for Boise State if they can get there because they have good history. If you're a Broncos fan, they have horrible histories if you're an OU fan. But the thinking is this. The Fiesta Bowl has kind of become Boise State's New Year's Six Bowl, hasn't it? The Broncos have played out West against elite competition three times since the start of the 2006 season and are 3-0 in the game, beating Oklahoma, y'all remember that one, TCU and Arizona. 
As this year's group of five champion, that means UCF and FAU would lose a game or two while the Broncos finish unbeaten or at least higher ranked than the Knights and Owls in the polls. Definitely possible. Bryce Love is hoping to have his final season with the Cardinal in with a bang. I can see that too, mostly because Oklahoma is probably going to beat the bricks off of Florida Atlantic, and I don't trust this UCF squad to be the same one that Scott Frost put together a year ago. Going unbeaten for them, I just don't see it, even in regular season. As for Stanford, David Shaw is going to ride Bryce Love into the ground which is exactly what I would do. And I would try to give that guy enough carries to go for 2,000 yards, maybe more, and see if you can't ride him not just to a New Year's Six Bowl, but to a Heisman Trophy. CBS Sports has Washington and Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl, which makes a lot of sense to me, but they padded it a little bit with this. One of the teams we have in our preseason bowl projections, Washington has its sights set on the final, as does Wisconsin, a team that finished one possession shy of a trip to the playoff last fall. The Badgers bring back all five starters along the offensive line, Alex Hornibrook at quarterback and Heisman candidate tailback Jonathan Taylor. The schedule isn't quite favorable in the Big Ten, however, this season, which could be why most prognosticators are picking Wisconsin just short of the semifinal. The Huskies have an important game in the opener against Auburn that should be quite impactful on the selection committee down the road. Of course, this is assuming that Washington beats Auburn and puts itself in position to make a New Year's Six Bowl. Also, I think that game is going to have a lot to say about whether or not Jake Browning, quarterback at Washington, is in the Heisman running in December. Now, Texas fans are going to love this because CBS has Georgia playing against Texas in the Sugar Bowl. With this to say, Texas in the New Year's Six Bowl? Boy, Longhorn fans would love this. This, a Georgia-Texas meeting in New Orleans would be a win for everyone involved except the Bulldogs who have their expectations set on getting back to the playoff. But back in Texas, where year two is expected to be quite a momentum boost for a program on its way back to prominence, the Longhorns have depth at quarterback with two quality level options and have the speed on the edge at receiver. Many of the big names on the defense are back too. Texas is one of the sexy preseason picks to give Oklahoma a run for its money in the Big 12, and we're thinking along those same lines. I mean, since there are Texas folks that watch the channel, I'm sure they're excited about this, as I said before, I just don't see it. I don't think that Sam Hard G. Ellinger is a good quarterback, and even if he was, he's one concussion short of being told to sit out football for life, and we already know that Shane Bouchelle is not everybody's first pick, which means that one of those two guys is warming the seat for Cameron Rising or Casey Thompson. Outside of that, there's so much rebuilding that needs to go on at Texas that Tom Herman couldn't even point to who the elite guys are on his team, saying some, to say nothing of not even knowing whether or not Tim Beck is going to call the plays and having an offensive coordinator who doesn't call the plays is a bad look for football. Georgia, yeah, y'all probably gonna make the Sugar Bowl. Y'all are loaded if you get good quarterback play. That's just the long and short of it. In the Orange Bowl, this is the first semifinal game. CBS has Clemson against Ohio State. I mean, I was on board with this until Urban Meyer was placed on paid administrative leave and Ryan Day became the guy running the day-to-day. -day. See what I did there? However, CBS Sports put it this way. Two chalk picks here, but these are two of college football's most talented teams and both are odds-on favorites to reach the final four. Smart pick here for the Tigers as the number two, and Clemson's roster is comparable, if not better, than Alabama's from top to bottom, and the Tigers have reached the playoff three consecutive years. The outlook is a bit murky at Ohio State, depending on the outcome of this investigation into ex-coach Zach Smith and Urban Meyer's knowledge of the situation. The Buckeyes are loaded too, though. Ohio State's backfield might be college football's best all around. I mean, okay, sure. You know how I feel about Clemson. You know how I feel about Ohio State. If they make it to the college football playoff, I'm not going to care because CBS would be right, which would mean this next pick is right up my alley. Having in the Cotton Bowl, the second semifinal, Alabama versus Oklahoma. I love this because number one means Oklahoma's getting back to the college football playoff. Number two, Alabama can't beat Oklahoma. We want Bama. We got him in the Sugar Bowl. We'll get him again. But CBS Sports put it this way. One of the few early projections which has a Big 12 team in the Final Four, one can assume Palm, that is Jerry Palm, is picking the Sooners not to miss a beat without Baker Mayfield at quarterback. Can Kyler Murray be an elite player in Lincoln Riley's offense? We know defending champion Alabama will likely be the number one seed in the postseason if it takes care of business versus a favorable schedule by SEC standards and enters with an unblemished 13-0 record. With Tua Tagovailoa soon to be entrenched as the Crimson Tide's next savior at quarterback with Heisman frontrunner odds, 
Alabama's offense should be near unstoppable. Until Mike Stoops gets it on track and the defense is number one in the country, I'm speaking it into existence in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. That's it for me. Deuces. <laughs>